Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From RA Music. That's right. That's where we are right now, deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> kind of message. And we're here to answer your questions. It's time for another Ask RNA video. Are you excited? So excited. Super excited. Let's get to it. All right, so welcome to the Ask RNA video. Mm -hmm. uh, quick little snippet I'm gonna throw out there. Okay. If you're interested in an RNA Music t-shirt, mm -hmm. I haven't really mentioned this lately, yeah. you can get one in the description of this video. There's a link to our Teespring store, Yeah. various styles and colors. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna support our little channel, you can go buy a t-shirt if you want. That's awesome. You don't have yes. to, but if you want to. You know you want to. You know you want to. You know, there's the, the new logo, there's the old fire, Bird Phoenix logo. Mm -hmm. Go check them out. Yeah. And first question. Triple seven six. I think is a new question. It says mm -hmm. a bit off topic, but Angela is so cute. LOL, you're a lucky man, man. Yeah, I am. Yes, I are. That's true. <laughs> I am. I am lucky man. <laughs> Bless you guys. I'm a new suburb, but love your style. Thank you. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome to the Arnie Channel. All the best from Liverpool, UK, home to a little known beat combo you may have heard of, the Ruddles. I've actually never heard of the Ruddles. Yeah. I think you might have meant the Beatles. Yeah. Dang. Well, maybe it is another group called the Ruddles from Liverpool that wasn't as popular as the Beatles. Maybe so. But they were out. You may have. I haven't. Typos. <laughs> uh, stay safe, you cats. I've heard you can drive for two days straight and still be in Texas. Is that true? I read that in Lemmy's book, White Line. Fever. Mm. Ah, two days? Mm. That's a bit of an exaggeration. Yeah, it depends on where you're coming from. If you're at the very top of Texas, going to, to the very south of Texas, I think that's still about 14, 15 hour yeah. drive. Yeah, yeah. It's not two, it's not two days. 48 hour drive across Texas. Yeah, yeah, no. It is 12 <laughs> to 15 from side to side and up and down. That's mm -hmm. about. It is pretty big. I think the furthest distance, two points, is almost 800 miles. It's like yeah. 796 miles, whatever. You know, from mm -hmm. the furthest point of Texas to the furthest point. So, yeah, uh, it can feel like a whole day, though. I mean, you can drive. You might want to take two days yeah. to drive it. <laughs> yeah, you might want to. You know, it can take you 10 hours to get through Texas. You know. Yeah. Well, I drove. I drove to Anaheim. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago to to go to Nam, and it's like. A 23 hour drive from Canton, Texas to Anaheim, California. And about mm -hmm. half of that was Texas. Yeah. Right? Getting mm -hmm. through the other states. So, two days is probably an exaggeration. Yeah, it's not two days at all. But 800 miles is a really long drive. Yeah. If you're doing 100 miles an hour, you could do it in eight hours. So, that make Texas almost twice about the size of the United States. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not that, it's not that big. Because honestly, if you start from California and get to Texas, like, that's a day. You can drive from Florida to California in 48 and then, hours. That's about a day. From California to Texas is about a, you know, depending on 24 where you are, it's, hours. It's about a day's drive. And from Texas to like Orlando, Florida, it's about another 24 hours. So that's the whole span yeah, yeah. of the United States. So Texas, as big as we think Texas is, it's not that big. Not that big. It, it is, is big. big. It is big though. <laughs> So there you go, man. Thank you so much for uh, <laughs> subscribing and for tuning in. And thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Next question, Adam Lamar, also from Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you guys think that Dean is going to see a rise in sales from this? I've always wanted a dime shape. Maybe now is the time. <laughs> mm. Talking about the uh, controversy with the old Gibson guitars and Dean lawsuits and all that stuff. Yeah. Dean is now like countersuing them. Mm. Mm. Because apparently Gibson threatened Dean dealers, Ooh. like stores that were carrying Dean guitars. Gibson fret, threatened them with like some legal action if they if they carried if they kept carried carrying them. them. And I'm like, oh, oh no, that was so that's bad. bad. It just keeps getting worse. Yeah. Now Dean could win that one. They could because there's I've seen some articles and they're talking about how they're infringing on their right to do business or something or yeah, right. this is not so looking ridiculous. good. This is not looking yeah. good for it's not. It's a bad PR move. And uh, yes, Adam, because in this very video, mm -hmm. there are some people who co who commented, like, I just bought a Dean to show my support. So I think absolutely Dean is gonna get a bump in business from this whole mm -hmm. thing. 
this is a bad PR move for Gibson in general. Yeah. I think it's a great PR thing for Dean. You yeah. know, now legal fees is going to cost money, but I think they're going to get a huge bump in sales. Already. I mean, there's they already have. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, I've always wanted a dime shape too, but when it comes to the dime guitars, I'm a little partial to the Washburn versions. I mean, if somebody wanted to give me a, a Dean dime, I would take it, but you know, if I had to go buy one, I, I kind of want those, but I like Dean guitars. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. Hope you're doing well in Austin, Texas. <laughs> Next question, Tracy Johnson. Mm -hmm. It said, that cool Robin Egg Blue Vola guitar behind you, Ryan, is awesome. Is that a stacked single coil in the bridge? Uh, yes, Tracy. It is a stacked single. And, uh, you know, you can push-pull the little... Uh, uh. Knobs. Knobs. Where is it? There it is. And you get a fat and sassy tone or a regular telly tone on that thing. I need to do a demo. Mm -hmm. I'll do a demo on that one yeah. soon. Um, question, does wattage matter when playing in a small club or even a church? We have a 300 person congregation and my 500 watts of bass coolness was barely enough, especially with piano and three singers and drums. Any help would be appreciated. God bless and many, many, many more years of wedded bliss. You too. We are coming up on our 10 year anniversary awesome. and we met in 05 awesome awesome congrats, congrats. 10 years is a good trek mm -hmm. it is so really thank is. you so much uh does wattage matter when you're playing a small clever church well kind of kind of it depends now for bass you know mm -hmm. you know 500 watts isn't necessarily a lot for right. a bass amp i mean basses need a lot of power mm -hmm. <laughs> You just do. But where it kind of matters is, is it depends on the PA system. Mm -hmm. If your church is running a pretty solid PA system, you don't really need a huge amp because everything runs through the PA and if they have subs mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, you're, you're pretty good. If your church has no PA system or the only thing running through the PA is the vocalists, mm -hmm. then you know more power is better for the amps. So mm -hmm. it, it really kind of depends. Most clubs, like legit music venues, should have a decent PA system. So I don't think the wattage necessarily really matters in a club setting. I mean, Adam from Lamar, who just asked a question, they played a decent sized club in Tyler, Texas, mm -hmm. using micro tears, right? 15 watt micros. Of course, you know, you pipe it through the sound system and it's like, yeah, awesome. So. Right. It, it really kind of depends on the club and the size of the church. Yeah. For me, I get away with I use a 15 watt Fender Super Champ tube amp at the church I play at, and it's plenty because we're piping it through the mm -hmm. sound system. <laughs> and even sometimes on stage, like, hey, can you turn your amp down? And I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, it's down on like 1.9. Like, it's either there's that little magic spot when you turn on your amp right. where it's like either off, and now it's on, and Right. Right. I can't I can't go any Too lower. Loud or off. Any lower is off for right. me. So it just depends, man. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Congratulations on the ten years. Um next question. Alan Woody. Hashtag El Toro Pupo. Yeah. What'd you think of all those El Toro Pupo that was hashtags? Great. That was great. We're gonna see quite a few of them I see in the next few questions, so Yeah. That That's was good. the magic hashtag of the day last week. Yeah. I like seeing that. It made me think of your uncle. I know. I was That's like, aw. <laughs> Miss him. Uncle Dale. Um, all right. Hey, hey, guys. Have you ever thought of establishing a guitar buying co-op? This may be far-fetched. Maybe you could contact mom and pop shops in surrounding towns, counties, whatever region makes sense, and increase your buying power. Anyway, just a thought. Hmm. Um, you know, Alan... That is not a bad idea. Um, the problem with that is most manufacturers will not allow that. It's yeah. not. It's not that I guess mom and pops wouldn't do it. I we actually did do that mm -hmm. with uh, a friend of ours. Are we going to mention his name? Can we make it one video without saying? I don't know. So a friend of mine and I, who are both carrying a certain guitar brand, yeah, we actually were able to partner on something and we kind of combined our forces and finances and ordered but it was a different kind of deal 
It was yeah. not a normal situation. Mm -mm. And the manufacturer was okay with it. But it's basically, I mean, we were ordering direct from the factory, so it didn't really, really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but most companies, they don't, you can't do that. Right. And there are rules about, like, if I'm a dealer for, let's say I'm a PRS dealer, mm -hmm. and I want to sell some guitars to another store who is not an official PRS dealer, and I'm right. selling to them, for them to resell, that's a big no-no. Like, right. you, they, they call it cross-selling. You can't. You can't do that. I mean, right. you can do it. You better not talk about it. But though. you can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's real. I mean, you could lose your your dealership if you do that. So it's mm -hmm. it's not that that's a bad idea, and I think it's great. But most manufacturers don't allow that. Mm -hmm. Some will. Some yeah. are cool with it because in the end result, all that matters is they're selling more of their product right. and getting it in more stores and into more consumers. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, most stores. Most, not stores, but most manufacturers are not down with that. So, mm -hmm. great idea, but yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not something we can do right. and have any dealer support afterwards. All right, uh, next question Riku Fan 009, or was it Riku? I don't know. Riku? Riku? I don't know. Uh, what, what your favorite type of amp? Tube, solid state, or digital, or does it matter to y'all? Mm -hmm. I like that you said y'all. Yeah. Thank you. You all. <laughs> um, it depends on the situation. Sure. For me, in general, I like a good tube amp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if I have my choice, I prefer to use a tube because I just feel like you can hear a difference. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I've owned solid states. I think they're great. I have a Katana 50 right now, which is great. But uh, even with all the built-in effects and stuff, that's cool, and it's a great practice amp and that kind of thing. Um, I still, given the choice, if I was going to perform, I would choose my Devil Cat or my Mesa, you know, over. Well, even I even use my Fender. I could use this Katana at the church gig I play at, mm -hmm. but I use my Super Champ because there's something about the tubey goodness that it's either the response or just the sound or whatever. But right. I like tubes. Sure. Yeah? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I'll agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next question. Drop tuned 83. Hey, question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's H A Y. Hey. <laughs> what is Texas Toast? Hmm. I know they are a custom guitar shop from Colorado, but what is Texas Toast? I'm so hungry after all the talk of burgers earlier on. I know what French toast is. And prawn toast, but Texas toast sounds interesting to my hungry belly right now. Mm. What's prawn toast? I have no idea what prawn is. Prawn, I know. King prawn. King prawn. Is that like shrimp, shrimp on your toast? toast? I don't know. I've never heard of prawn toast. Um, Texas toast is like regular bread that is, a, you know, that you would like home baked bread that you would make cut into wide one inch to one and a half inch slices, buttered on either side with garlic and, you know, oregano or something like that with, you know, that's very Italian-y and toasted. So you can either toast it first or you can butter it and then grill it, like put it on a grill or in a skillet almost like you would do French, French toast or um, grilled cheese. Can you Top bake it? Do people bake it? Yes. I mean, they have it already pre-made. Like, Walmart carries it. Go to the grocery store and buy Texas Yeah, you toast. can buy them at, at Dollar General's or wherever local, you know. Usually, they actually have a brand called Texas Toast that you can buy in your freezer section. Um, but, yeah, it's just really thick sliced toast. So, you can get a French loaf. Um, not like baguette loaf, like a thin, but a thick, hearty piece of loaf of bread. And slice it into thick slices butter it garlic it on both sides um, and then um, skillet fry it or grill it or whichever even or toaster it first and then butter your do your sides both sides of the toast so or you know French bread is usually in on one side of each slice so it's not both usually both sides sometimes depends on what bread bread you get but I just think of it as regular toast. 
-hmm. but bigger. Yeah. Like Texas sized toast. Toast. Like man toast. Yeah. Not girly toast. Yeah, but it looks like it kinda looks like a French bread slice. It's not like what you would get like a sandwich bread, but just bigger. Real thicker. thick. Super thicker. thick. Thick and chunky toast. So good. I'm really hungry now. Yeah. Did I eat breakfast? I did not eat breakfast. You did not. All I've had is toast. She not Texas to, toast. Not, you should make some <laughs> peanut butter Texas toast. Oh god, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> too many carbs. Way too many, and that just whole upsets grain, my stomach just whole to grain, think about it. Texas toast. Yeah. Oh, no, thanks. My arms. <laughs> uh, you okay? Yeah. My arms are right. so. Mm -hmm. I got distracted. You didn't have breakfast. I did not have breakfast. No. Something about toast. Oh, no, no. Somebody actually, there was a comment. Somebody was like, who the heck cares what you had over your burgers last week? Uh, but interestingly enough, there were, you. there were a ton of comments, people saying, Angela's right. Jalapenos on burgers are great. And a lot of people going, yeah, that's what I like on my burger. That's right. So plenty of people. Suck it. Plenty of people. If Suck you watched, <laughs> If you Suck watched our videos, the last 217, I'm going through and trying to number them all now. Like yeah. 200 plus Ask RNA videos. Right. We've had so many questions about what it'll be like on our pizza. What's our favorite ice cream? What's your favorite barbecue? Who has the best barbecue? <sighs> You know, all kinds How do you of food bake your questions. Chicken? How? What are you having? What do you put on your chili? What do you do for breakfast? What's yeah. breakfast like in Texas? Yeah, all kinds of questions. All kinds of questions, you guys. So stop being so ridiculous. Come on. Mm. <laughs> uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Drop Tune Eighty Three. Next question: Gary Swift hashtag El Toro Pupo. There you go. Legend. There it Gary is. Gary Swift. I'm a new viewer, but already love you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I, I like her. I like him. I'm a big fan. Just curious, if you're in East Texas, I'm wondering if you might already know Scott Beckwith of Wing Feather slash Birdsong slash SD Curly Guitars. <laughs> My main bass is one of his short scale C bass instruments. Hmm. If you're close to Wimberley in Hill Country, it might be fun to do a field trip to Scott's workshop. Don't mess with Texas. <laughs> uh, awesome. Thanks for the question, Gary. Uh, I am not familiar with Scott Me mm -hmm. Beckwith, nor do I know him. No. Surprisingly, because, yeah. you know, I know nearly everybody in Texas. Yes. All 26 million of or us. Related are related to at least half of them. Yeah, a third, probably. Yeah. Did you say 2,600? 26 million. Did I say 100? <laughs> yeah. There's only 2,600 people. No. 26 million people in Texas. I think it's 27 million now, but I, I am not familiar with him. Um, the Curly Guitars kind of rings a bell somewhere, but I don't I don't know. There, there's there's some, several guitar manufacturers and uh, music industry makers in Texas, and a lot of them I've just found out about in the last several years. Yeah. There's like Rio Grande pickups, make guitar pickups. I'm like... Mm -hmm. Well, I should, I should have, I feel like I should have known about that before right. recently, but you know, uh, it's a big state. As far as taking a trip, it's about four and a half hours from here to, um, Wimberley, 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 so which is, Austin? it's close to San Marcos. It's like the other okay. side of Austin. Cause that's hill country out there. Yeah. It's like the other side of Austin ish. So it's kind of between Austin and San Antonio. Okay. So I Googled it mm -hmm. like a good bass player and I was like, mm -hmm. how far is this? I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, it says four and a half hours. So, you know, maybe I'll kind of, we, mm -hmm. we drive through there from time to time on our way to Laredo, yeah. Texas, which is, uh, for the other guy, it's like nearly eight hours for us to get to Laredo, Texas to mm -hmm. visit family. So yeah. So look at, if you see, think of Texas. The big part of Texas that comes out like that. We're at the top corner, and my parents at the tip of Texas. They're down here. So from there to here. Well, they're not even the tip. They're kind of the side. The side. No, like no. The like here's the here's the tip of Texas, and they're like there, and we're here. So we have to go to Austin, San Antonio, Laredo. <laughs> yeah, there's not much between San Antonio and Laredo. <clears throat> there's a couple little towns, but yeah. mostly highway and. Cats. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe I'll check them out. I'll look them up online and see what's going on, mm -hmm. and uh, look into their their uh, their instruments and what they do. 
Yep. It's nice down there. I do like mm -hmm. the landscape around Austin, San Marcos. I know, it's really, really pretty. It's really pretty. Uh, just fun guitar with the next question. Awesome. Thank you, Gary Swift, for the question. Next question, just fun guitar. He said, I think it was King George, but I agree he was a tyrant fighting to get money from the colonies to pay his bank bills with the Rothschilds. Mm. We, were Rothschilds. we were talking about the king when we yes. were... Like we said he was the king. James he was the or, king when we were yeah. fighting. It was George. For our independence. Yeah. Uh, new questions. One, do you like the band R.E.M.? Mm -hmm. Two, who invented the guitar? <laughs> Hashtag El Toro Pupo. Nice. El Toro Pupo. Nice nod to my uncle. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. We're feeling the love for great uncle. Yeah. My great, great uncle. Great uncle. Right? Mm -hmm. Hashtag El Toro. I met him. We had dinner one time. Yep. I was like, I like him. Yep. That's pretty much all he said, though, was... Yeah, he would go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and or, he was mm. very, yeah. <laughs> um, do you like the band R.E.M.? Um, back in the day, I liked a few of their songs, like... Hey, way back there. Way, way back. Way, way. Um, but I never... You know, the ones that I think everybody knows of theirs, that across the board, no matter who you are, you probably heard them on the radio. You know, but I wasn't a fan of yeah. R.E.M. I never had a, a CD or record or tape or, you know, are they old enough to have tapes? Sure. Yeah, they um, are. Most people watch, most people who watch our channel are 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Mm -hmm. So. No, I mean, is R.E.M. Oh. old enough of a band to have been on tapes? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. The 80s. Okay, sure. It came out in the 80s, right? Mm -hmm. See, I'm pretty sure. Obviously, I'm not a fan. Not, I would know not that. Not a fan. So okay. I didn't really hear about them until I was like, end of my high school year. Yeah. When they had a couple of hits towards the mid 90s, or you know, so. Not really. No. Not so much. Me neither. I mean, you know, they had songs that would come on the radio. Yeah. I, I'm trying to trying to name one. I'm trying to think of one. I'm like, right. What they had. They had one that's in the tip of my brain that I can't. Yeah, I know. I'm, every time I think of some REM songs, or I think it's REM, like, it's the end of it's the world not. as we know it. Is that REM? I don't know. It's the end of the world. Don't demonetize my video. Right. Because I said the lyrics. We had to look it up. <laughs> that was '87. Back, uh, back to '83. Wow. See. Yeah. Losing my religion. That was one of the the big hits. Yeah. And shiny, happy people. <laughs> mm -hmm. They were on Sesame Street when Nicholas was... That's right. ...little, singing Happy Monsters. Shiny, happy monsters? Silly, happy monsters. Silly, and they happy went monsters. through the, all the emotions, you know. You know. <laughs> silly, happy monsters feeling silly, happy monsters feeling sad. <laughs> Anyways, look it up yeah. if you yeah. haven't seen the Sesame Street version. That's how I. That's the first thing I think of when I think of Ari. Sesame Street. They were on Sesame Street. They were on. Sesame they made Street. it. You know yeah. you've made it when you get to be on Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of making it. That's the truth. You know, Platinum Records. And you're not a stuff. real artist unless you've sang with Grover. You're not a real rock star. Big so Bird you've been on or Sesame Street. Yeah. <laughs> Next question after the mm -hmm. REM from Just Fun Guitar was who invented the guitar. Well, hmm. that's a tricky one, I think, Chris. It depends on who you ask. I had to go do a little research. And I'm, what guitar you're talking about. Yeah, well, because it's kind of funny. As I was looking through, because I kind of wanted to know that, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think part of it is people are like, oh, Gibson guitar, you know, they're suing because they, you know, have their own take on it. But I mean, guitar has been around for hundreds of years. And it's like, do you really own, you know, anything on the guitar? I mean, you can own your brand, the name right. of your brand, Gibson Guitars. But... Um, what I was looking at, I'm just going to summarize some of this stuff, but interestingly, yeah. it's just, I mean, there were guitar like instruments that came out of Africa, like mm -hmm. going back hundreds of years. Yeah. We kind of trace it back to, uh, Spain, like in the 15th century. Mm -hmm. Um, and the early, the early guitar mm -hmm. had, uh, basically four, two sets of strings with four strings basically, mm -hmm. but they were doubled kind of like on a 12 string guitar yeah. is how it's doubled. They mm -hmm. called those courses. And the guitars had four courses. Mm -hmm. Like a now I'm hungry. But it's kind of kind of like a you know, a ukulele type thing. Mm 
Yeah. <clears throat> so the earliest guitar, I guess they called a guitar, had four strings. Mm -hmm. And then like in the 16th or 17th century, they added a, a fifth string, which would be like our A string now. Um, but that's not, that's not what we kind of consider as the modern day acoustic guitar that you would walk into a guitar store now and buy. So it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about the earliest form of it, it goes back pretty far. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I did find <laughs> a couple of things that uh, my Italian is not very good. Yeah. So I'm going to mispronounce this guy's name, but Gaetano Vinacci is credited with discovery of the first six string guitar, which kind of became the basis of the modern acoustic guitar. And his family also built, they made mandolins, um, a six string mandolin, which was like 1799. So that some historians say that guy, Gaetano Vinacci, but then most of them, as far as our modern acoustic guitar, that what we can kind of consider that was uh, Antonio Torres, Warado, Warado. Mm -hmm. I don't know. My Spanish is not great. Either. You think in Texas my Spanish would be better? <laughs> but uh, as far as the, um, he kind of took uh, Vinacci's guitar and sort of modernized it like in the like 1850s into what we would kind of consider as sort of the modern uh, acoustic guitar, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That doesn't sound right though. Because Martin was around like 1833. So that doesn't seem right. There, they did say that basically there's a six string instrument dated to 1779 um, that was built by Vinacci that people kind of consider to be the first acoustic guitar. I can see Real that. acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, if you keep digging around, I mean, you can dig and dig and dig and, and find stuff. But there are people saying, well, what do you consider to be a guitar? In the early days, what I think was funny is when the first, the first guitars came out, they were kind of frowned upon as like an inferior instrument. Like, mm -hmm. there were no lute. Mm -hmm. Lutes were like the real string instruments. Like, if you were a legit bard, you played the lute. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that guitar, that's a bunch of crap. And so it was frowned upon at the time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, nowadays, like, they may play the, play the lute. the Spaniards got a hold of it. To the Spanish. Man, I tell you what, the they Spanish started. Spanish tore that sucker up. Yeah. They're fast fingers. They came beautiful, out with that. Beautiful music. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of depends on who, who you research. I had to Google that myself, you know. And even then you come across several different, you have to kind of wade through all the data and kind of make a decision. Right. And, and interestingly, I found some stuff they were talking about. Well, in Africa it had its own stringed mm -hmm. instruments that you could kind of consider, you know, to be guitars. And I'm sure in the Far East they had their own stringed instruments. Right. You know, it's just, what, what do you define as a modern day guitar? Mm -hmm. What we consider a guitar. Right. Anyways. Thanks for the question, Chris. Just fun yeah. guitar. Next question, Big John in mm -hmm. Flo Rida. Hey, Big John. <laughs> he says, hashtag El Toro Pupo. Hi, guys. First one for you, Angela. Question for Angela. If you guys come out with a Series 2 limited edition RNA CMG guitar, will you be crocheting little Viking helmets for the headstock? Yes. Really? No. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> that would be rad if you got a little, you know, Headstock protector, <laughs> crocheted. Yeah, that yeah. just fits right so just, there on the top, and the yeah. beard goes down the. Side. Just covers it, you know. And so when it's in its case, it's protected. Maybe the first, if you're the first one to buy the next series, I'll crochet you a, a bearded, a bearded headstock. Maybe protector. there's a market for that. Mm. That'd be hilarious. Mm. <laughs> I think we should make one. I don't know about that. I we should make one. Okay. <laughs> That's a cute idea. I, I love that idea, Big John. <laughs> Angela, I don't know if she loves it or not. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> I said, and speaking about hamburgers, how do you guys feel about that Wonder Burger, formerly owned by a Texas company, now owned by a Chicago company? Hashtag eat authentic burgers. Right? Eat authentic. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about that, Ooh. didn't we, a couple of weeks ago, about the whole Whataburger being bought out? Yeah. Well, I think we kind of side mentioned it. I don't think we actually Casually talked about mentioned it. it. I think it's sad. I was like, yeah. you have a, a, a brand and a company that is known as a, this is a Texas-based. Like, loved. Owned. It's like In-N-Out Burger for California. Yeah. 
Everybody, not everybody, I shouldn't say that. A lot of people know in and out Burger, California. It's California. In out Burger, it's California. Even the Californians here are like, oh my gosh, there's an In-N-Out Burger in Tyler. There's an In-N-Out Burger in you know certain parts of Dallas. They get so excited and they post everything about it. Texans are like that about Whataburger. Mm -hmm. So what to know a that a Chicago company. Not that there's anything wrong with people in Chicago. Bought a Texas burger. That's like two. I mean, it'd be different if it was like an Oklahoma company. Oh my, they'd be fighting. <laughs> There'd be a war over that. Yes. Oklahoma can't have. Be like, burger. remember the Alamo. Um, but still, it's like there's not another company. There wasn't another company in Texas. So either that makes me think that they they went like below the radar, and vetted each other, or you know. Because I'm like, with the amount of money that's in Texas, you would think that there was a company worthy and, oh, and sure. strong enough and... and There's not an investment group in Texas that that's in like, Texas, hey, let's keep it local. No, we're keeping... Te yeah. That had enough money to put in the pot to, to win over Whataburger because you're going to make money. Yeah. It's not like it's a out, going out of business type, you know. Right. It's not like, I don't think they're Speaking on the verge. Over, like, I want a Whataburger right later. Right. I kind of want one too. Man. Because I haven't had breakfast. I know. Let's close and put one here in a little bit. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Because, like, I don't even remember where, where did McDonald's start. Mm. I didn't watch the movie. I don't want to watch the movie. But yeah, it's like, at a certain point, mm -hmm. you kind of grow past your region. And you just become known as, hey, it's Whataburger. Mm -hmm. Who cares where the corporate headquarters is? Right. Do we really care about that stuff? I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, do we really care where our guitars are made? Right. I mean, some people do, yes, but do people at large in general care? It's like, do we care that? I think you start. Are you going to stop whenever, going to Whataburger? Well, it depends on how, if they lose their quality. If the quality takes a dive, it's then just yes. like if the what is it the Christies who own Chick Fil A, if someone sold Chick Fil A to another company mm -hmm. that didn't have the same values as the Christie family. And then they started changing everything because Chick-fil-A is known for their customer service. I don't care who you are. You go to Chick-fil-A, yeah, yeah. you're treated like royalty. You get good service you there. You get excellent service. And then if they got sold out to somebody else who didn't have the same core value system and it changed, you would be upset. It's like I go there because I know that, first of all, I'm going to get my food in like regular time. It's always going to be hot. It's always going to be great quality. That it's never going to be wrong. And their sauce is drinkable. Like... <sighs> Not There's for me, but things. for some people. Same thing with Whataburger. Whataburger has a quality, Consistency. a standard, their level of produce, their level of... Oh, oh my God, my mouth is watering. <laughs> Yours is watering. I care about my burgers. Oh, oh my God. We're talking about what we put on our burgers, y'all. Because somebody asked like the question. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. I guess time will tell. Time will... Time always tells. The market always decides, Big John. Big John has a beard. Next question, Psycho G, hashtag El Toro Poopo, hashtag KTMA. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. <laughs> it says, love the color of your Gibsons. Well, how about that? I just happen to have them right here. Wine red is a great color. Or cherry. It depends yeah. what you call it. I call it wine red. I think yeah, it's I don't officially think it's cherry. It's cherry, but now they call it cherry, but I'm like, that's not a cherry. That's wine red. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just so people don't think we absolutely hate Gibson guitars. I mean, I'm not selling mine because of all the drama. Mm -hmm. It's not that specific piece of wood's fault that the corporate overlords are making terrible business decisions. Mm -hmm. um, it says, when it comes to Gibson, break out the hip waders, boys, because it's getting deep in here. Truth. <laughs> it is. The internet is all abuzz with the Gibson mm -hmm. shenanigans. Mm -hmm. How is Paul, the bitter bass man, doing? He ain't been around for a while. How are the kids that you teach doing? You haven't shown them playing either. Y'all must be pretty busy down in them neck of the woods. <laughs> we are. We uh, are. Paul is doing pretty good. I think in our upcoming vlog videos, I'm super behind. I'm like a month and a half behind on our vlog videos. Mm -hmm. So I have one coming out in a day or two. And I think Paul makes an appearance in the vlog video. Yeah, He is crazy busy because... You guys may or may not know that a tornado hit Canton, Texas like a month ago. Mm -hmm. Well, we were in Georgia doing the CMG thing. The tornado mm -hmm. came down right on top of Paul's office that he yeah. works at. Ripped the roof off. 
So his company that he works for, they had to relocate their office. Well, they have multiple offices. And so he's working in Dallas most of the time right now for the last month and a half. He's been busy. He's been crazy busy. He hasn't even been here in Canton most of the time. Mm -mm. And he's sad about it and bitter yeah, about it. Because he, he misses hugs. He almost. needs a hug and he's not getting his RNA hugs. Yeah. So he's super sad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and they're and they're still in the middle of trying to re find a new place here in town to reopen their their Canton branch of their their business, and it's just been ridiculous for him. Yeah. But make sure you tune in as I as I get these little vlog videos out for you guys. Y'all y'all see some more some more of Paul there. Yeah. And uh, how are our kids that we teach doing? Yeah, they're doing great. We have so many of them. <laughs> that it is it's getting it's getting really busy and we opened up a little bit more hours to get you know things kind of flowing where we want the shop and stuff to go we have in you know some really great ideas for the kids and stuff and a lot of great future adventures and opportunities for them and yeah it's going really great we have quite a few new students we do yeah so um we're it's like once we get used to them a whole new batch comes through and then we get used to these kids and then a whole new batch comes through so um right now we're still kind of getting used to the this new batch or i am anyway we have new batch of starter most kids of, uh, most of the new kiddos but um yeah they're doing great we're about to have a recital in two weeks yeah we did a gig out on the park it'll be in a vlog which i have not yeah you'll see some of yet. them you'll yeah, see yeah. some if of them you, if you catch our weekend vlogs you'll you'll see some of that stuff there mm -hmm. um we just played out in the park a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago they did a great job yeah. super proud of them all yeah um we have a recital coming up in about two weeks oh my gosh that's mm -hmm. that's coming up yeah, and we have rehearsals best. for that so they're doing really good mm -hmm. i'm really proud of them they're working really hard right now it may or may not be able to share some of that stuff because it gets crazy because they're learning cover songs like we're playing some pat green which is a texas musician guy we're yeah. playing some uh Metallica, Darius Rucker, Darius Rucker we're playing yeah. some Metallica, we're, we played some No Doubt, we're yeah. playing all these songs that if I put them in the video, of course, we'll get demonetized for that, mm -hmm. or possibly the video could get deleted, deleted. because it's not our music, mm -hmm. so we have to be kind of cautious with that Yeah, kind of a thing, but uh, yeah, I think we're going to have a lot more opportunities the rest of this year. Playing in the park on the square in downtown Canton, Texas was kind of a test Yeah. to see how that would go. And it was a great outdoor gig mm -hmm. experience for the kiddos. Right. And when it gets cooler, I think we're going to do a lot more of that. And yeah. really, uh, I think for the rest of the year. If it's not raining. <laughs> if it's not raining and there's no tornadoes and it's not a thousand degrees, if we get that perfect window, <laughs> perfect Texas weather window, mm -hmm. you know, I think, we'll, I think we're going to have a lot more opportunities for our kids to play put together set lists and yeah. stuff coming up so mm -hmm. they're doing great but watch the vlogs because that's where you'll see some of that stuff the behind the scenes stuff is all in the vlogs mm -hmm. go check that out uh thank you psycho g and we are crazy busy yes we are indeed crazy busy phone i mean you answer that yeah <laughs> see super busy. see it's very busy super busy obviously um mm -hmm. yeah which is great. It's a great problem for us to have. Yeah. You know. Thank you for the question, Psycho. Next question, Victor Garcia. Hashtag El Toro Pupo. Hey, hey. You guys, all well, you guys made it to the end of the last video. I like authentic hamburgers. <laughs> Aside from Paul, who is your favorite bass player or bass solo in a song? Hmm. Oh, man. Favorite bass, bass player, whoever is playing behind any of the songs in Motown hits. Yeah. Whoever is ripping it in all of those, uh, Stevie Wonder. Um, Jackson 5. Yes. Because it's not, what's his name, Jackson? Yeah. The kid. All, I mean, they are tearing it. Whoever that, those people are, I, I might not be the, obviously the same person over and over again because it's different eras different people mm -hmm. but man those people those motown session bass players yes who played on everybody's records yes yeah we were just talking about the other day we we're listening to some the music 70s like, where, where it was oh my gosh. for bass players they were ripping it up yeah uh <laughs> other than paul yeah 
Same. like the Marvin Gaye songs, um, just any of them. You name a Motown inspired artist from the seventies and listen to their bass player. That them. Yeah. They're pretty ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I mean, I love, I love some rock stuff like rock and roll and heavy yeah. metal, hard rock stuff. I'm, I'm all about that, but mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, there's so many great bass players out there. Mm -hmm. um, but that recently has caught our attention, you know, listening to the Pandora or we're on a trip or whatever. And like, we're just, whatever song comes on, is like, listen to that bass. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What was that Jackson five song that we were listening to the other day that I was like, Oh my gosh, I can't remember. I tried to look it up and find it. And there was some contention. They couldn't really say no one was sure. It's either one of two guys who was the bass player on that Jackson five song. Um, it was, um, do, 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 Yeah. Whatever. Was it? Yeah. What was the name of the song? I can't remember. Anyways. Oh, baby, give me one more chance. Yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah, that bass was running it. It was ripping it, man. Mm -hmm. Like he was tap dancing on those keys. Yeah. It's like Fred Astaire of bass players. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, groove like flashy. Like there are some guys out there who are super technical, doing blah, 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 like, like some yeah. crazy bass stuff out there. But I'm like, yeah, but that makes you groove. Yeah, you know, any that bass makes you like, dang, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, some good bass. Yeah, so those guys. <laughs> those guys. <laughs> those guys. Um, next question, Mike Cashel. And final question. Oh, yeah. Hashtag El Toro Pupo. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Great Uncle Dale. Mm -hmm. um, as far as Gibson goes, I don't think they went far enough based on the aggressiveness of their video. Right? So we asked, like, do you, was their um, press release enough of a type of apology or whatever? Mm. And he says, that being said, I really feel bad for Mark Agnesi. I think he was only the messenger, and there are a lot of people putting the blame on him. Before Gibson, he was the manager at Norm's Rare Guitars and doing everything he could to feed his family and survive in L.A. Uh, he's a good Italian boy, originally from Ohio, that just moved his family to, from L.A. to Nashville the week of that video. <laughs> what a terrible spot to be placed in. Mm. So he had just moved his fam, yeah. as he got the job. My question for both of you, assuming Mark didn't just drop that message on his own free will, how do you feel for him and his family as being the scapegoat? Mm. Oh, that's a good question, Mike. Yeah. I've seen that kind of come up, and they're like, hey, you know, he's getting a lot of heat for being the deliverer, the guy, the voice, the face in that video. He's getting a lot of heat for that, and a lot of people are saying, well, it wasn't him. It was the... The company. The company, the board of directors, the CEO, whoever who decided, we're going to put this out. You're going to make the video. Yeah. And uh, and so, obviously, because he was the face, he's taking the heat. Uh, what do you think? Um, I don't know why, whenever you were saying that, I thought of the movie with um, Jim Carrey and Taya Leone, whenever Dick and Jane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whenever the company was going under and he promoted him, they promoted him really quick and they were like, hey, you get to be the press release, da 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 da. And then on the day of everything, they find out that they were extorting money and they were shredding everything and he thought he was in this great position, but he was really the scapegoat. Of the whole, the whole, the whole shebang, and uh, it's, it's one of my favorite Jim Carrey movies because him and Taylor Leone are hilarious. I haven't watched that in a while. The best. That's right. When they have the voice distorters, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so they start like robbing banks. Or something? They start robbing people and yeah, and all kinds of stuff to to be able to afford their lifestyle that they they grown accustomed to. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's possible. I wouldn't put it past any company to put somebody out there to save their own neck. Yeah, um, I mean, they could have sacrificed him. Which is sad. It really is. Um, but, but do I feel bad for him? I don't necessarily feel bad for him because there has been a ton of things that have come across my desk or my life or my um, opportunity to say things 
and to represent certain people or to or go along with the flow just because someone above me has told me that this is the way it needs to go. And there's a choice there. But because of, and a lot of people after, you know, and I've made the decision to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to get fired. Yeah, I'm not going to have my position anymore. Yeah, I might have to downgrade or whatever. We might have to sacrifice a bit, which we've had to do. But there's a decision. Either you, you know, moving from L.A. to Nashville, I'm sure his house isn't some 300 square foot, you know, mobile home that he moved into. Um, he lives a certain kind of lifestyle. And when people do, I'm not trying to knock him, but this is just overall everybody has this kind of mentality. When that lifestyle gets threatened and you're having to make a choice, do this or lose this lifestyle, when you have, especially when you have a family involved, and this is what makes it even worse about Gibson, not this man, um, that they used his life as a bargaining chip, basically, in order to get what needed to be said, said, or what they thought needed to be said, said. It's sad, but everybody makes a choice. And some people, they rather choose to conform because of their comfort than to sacrifice a little bit of discomfort and keep their integrity and walk away. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, with him having this kind of resume and being able to say, this is what I did, but because of my integrity and because I believe in the people more than I believe in the guys, the big wigs in their comfortable chairs, I'm going to step away from this. And um, even though it might be hard, even though it might suck for a little while, there's always a choice. There's always a choice. And when the words that are coming out of your mouth don't line up with your own integrity, if that was is who the kind of person he is, then there's just not a good feeling about, you know, he should have now, after all that has been said and done, he hasn't said that as far as I know, or we would be talking about it, hasn't come out and say, you know what? I regret doing that. I didn't realize that this is what the end result was going to be for me or my family. And I'm going to distance myself from this. I'm going to step down and distance myself from this because I don't want to be a part of something, a legacy like this. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't yet. Um, he so, shared some of the memes that people made up. And it was kind of like, yeah, it was funny. You know, but, you know, but still, what are you going to do? Because it's like, you know, there, I, honestly, there comes a choice. And do I feel bad that his his family is going through this? Yes. Do I necessarily feel bad for him personally? No. Honestly, because I don't know him. Yeah. Um, but I do know that kind of position. And I know how hard it is to actually walk away and say, you know what? Forget it. My my integrity means more to me than your company yeah you know it's all conjecture at this point because we don't really know Honestly, we, we yeah. have to assume that if the question is he was absolutely against doing this and said it's a bad idea we should right. not do this guys and the company's like no you're doing it right that's what we're we're, we're kind of assuming you know and right. that he even though he disagreed with it he valued his job over what he thought right. we don't know that that's true right he exactly. might have. He might have thought. A lot of mm, this is a little harsh. I think this is a little harsh, guys. I mean, I'm with you. I am with you 100. percent But this is a little harsh. Maybe we should word it slightly differently. And there, mm -hmm. you know. Who knows? He might have even worded it differently. And what he might have wrote it said was better than what they actually wanted to say. Who knows? I mean, there's like again, like you said, the conjecture. The, the we don't what know. ifs. We don't know. You know. But I do know that he did say those things. Yeah. He did go out and he stepped out. And I do know that he has heard and seen and he has felt the backlash of what everybody has been saying. And I do know that as of right now, he has not come out and said, you know what? This is not good PR for me and my family, for my future in the career of music or whatever industry. And I'm going to separate myself from you guys. And, you know, you can take my whatever, you can take this or that, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave with yeah. my integrity intact and move along, move along. You know, those things we do know. Yeah. Now, what led up to that moment, no one knows except for him, those people, and God. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily feel bad because I'm like, listen, if you go and do some research on Gibson, the corporation, not this guitar that I love, the corporation, the business, how they treat their employees, down mm -hmm. from the dudes who work on the floors, 
to the middle management guys, you can go on glassdoor.com. There's places you can look and see what is their reputation as a business with how they treat their employees. Mm -hmm. It is not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a fact that it's, I mean, the turnover is crazy. How many, especially middle management, not the CEO guy who just, he's gone now. <laughs> the former CEO was there a long time, but everybody right below him, uh, it's a revolving door of, mm -hmm. of people and it's like, if he did his due diligence of knowing research he that he into. should have known exactly what he was walking into. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and everybody has a choice. If your boss asks you to do something that you fundamentally disagree with, are, does your beliefs matter more than your possible paycheck? Right. And we've been there. We've done that. We're like, we've left jobs. We're like they were doing something like I cannot stand it's by and agree with this. No. I don't know where I'm going to go or what I'm going to do next yes. or what. I know I will probably be horribly talked about, which is an, almost a guarantee. Yeah. I know that we probably will have to take a long break from doing certain things. And that was ended up being so. But it meant more to me. I'd rather walk away than stand up in front of people who are going to look up to me, especially my children and my spouse, than... I, I rather walk away than stand up there and them think that I agree with what's being done. Right. Because whenever you do that and you keep going with the company after you know good and well that they treat people horribly or you know good and well that they're stealing or I'm not saying that Gibson is it's just right, in right. a broad spectrum. If you know that they're doing these, you know, immoral, you know, just not right stuff and you stay... Yeah. It's, you know, and I don't, and I don't get the whole, but I'm there to help change. No, you start something else. Team up with somebody who is good at what they do, who does give to charities, who does respect their community and the people who they work for. Go work for them and build that company so that it will outshine this company yeah. and that company will just disintegrate on its own. Don't get in there because what it looks like is that you agree, that mm -hmm. you agree. Of with what they're doing and what 100% what they stand for. So it's all on him. Honestly, yeah, yeah. from this for the from this point on, it has been on all on him. And we may never know. No, he would not be the first guy to cave in and oh, do gosh. something for cor corporate company pressure for a paycheck and not lose yeah. a job. And he would also Personality. not be the first guy to ever be like, "Screw you guys, I'm not doing that. Right. This is a bad move. We should not do it. And if you fire me, you fire me." Right. But I am not going to do that because I fundamentally disagree, right. and I think it's wrong. It's always a choice, though. You know, it, and again, we don't know. Like we weren't, we weren't. None of us were in on those meetings no. <laughs> with what they said. We don't know how bad it got or how. Yeah. You know, apathetic they were, or how heated yeah. it was. We don't know. We will never know. Now, I do think they should have put the CEO in there, like he, because he's all about. He's doing press tours and sitting down and talking and doing YouTube things. The why? new CEO. Why wouldn't you can have somebody else be hated and not you? Yeah. So why why would they put him in there and not have JC uh, do it? <laughs> so, Who knows? Uh, I think you know. There you go, Mike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. That's my 50 cents. 50 cent. <laughs> that wasn't two cents. We've been there pay. and we've Tree said, <laughs> nah, we're leaving. We're not going to be a part of this. Mm-hmm. I don't know where we're going to get the next paycheck from. I better go hustle and figure it out. Yeah. But I ain't going to stand by and be a part of this. But it's so much, it's so worth it when you know that you did it for the right reasons instead of sticking around for the wrong ones. Mm -hmm. And there it is. Great question, Mike. What do you guys think about that? I mean, like I said, we don't know. Right. All I know is what I would do in that situation. Exactly. If, hypothetically. Mm-hmm. And that's all any of us know is what, what would we do? Right. You don't really know what another person would or could or should do because no. we don't have all the facts necessarily. But Right. Anyways, that is all the questions for this week. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for all the hashtag El Toro Pupos. That was very nice. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a funny but nice, I think, memory for Angela's great uncle. Yeah. We're thinking about doing a shirt that says El Toro Pupo. Yeah. I think we should. I think so, too. If we do, you'll see it here. But uh, yeah. thank you guys so much. Please leave your comments below and your thoughts on the various questions and the various answers. And, of course, leave your question for next week. Mm -hmm. And we'll try to answer them here next week 
on Ask RNA. And until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. The music needs you. And you need the music. We need the music. We need to keep it alive for the next generation. All them kiddos. All them kiddos coming up, learning to play music. And uh, I think we need to go get a burger. I think so too. Probably. Mama's hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry too. Oh. Uh, what's the secret hashtag of the day? Mm. What a burger. Hashtag what a burger. What a what burger. What a burger. Not water yes, burger. It's not water burger. It's not what? burgers made from water. Like, what a burger. What a burger this is. That's, yeah, so if you made it to the very end of this video, you are a legend and amazing. And if you type hashtag what a burger <laughs> below in the comment section of this video, we will know that you made it to the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will think of you as a legend. So thank you so much for doing that. And mm -hmm. we will see y'all in the next video. Yep. I wonder if they still have that Dr. Pepper I think shake. they do. I think they kept it through it's the summer. It's Friday. I should totally just carve out all day. Carve it out. Carve it out. <laughs> Hashtag carve, carve out. Carve it out. <laughs> yes. All right. We'll see y'all later. Bye, guys. It's getting hot in here.